History has a way of reminding us of all the people who paved the way. Some of our great grandparents couldn't even vote here. Everybody should have an equal opportunity to vote. I wish I had the strength to go out of my comfort zone and to put a lot of my securities on the line to achieve what's so important to me and so important to the people who are going to follow me. Things evolve and it takes time. You have to build consensus, you have to change minds, and you have to believe in your cause. The women's suffrage movement did all of that, and look, 100 years later, we're voting in mass. On August 18, 1920, the 19th Amendment was ratified, and on August 26th, it was added to the Constitution, guaranteeing women the right to vote. We often hear about Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and we hear about the suffrage, you know, the big Seneca Falls Convention, the first women's rights convention in 1848 and then you realize the 19th amendment didn't happen until 1920 and that's 72 years um, so you're like well what would we do today if we knew it was going to take 72 years to come to fruition michelle witty executive director of the league of women voters in minnesota says many women from our state played a role in that victory and beyond clara uland was the president of the minnesota women's suffrage association when the 19th amendment passed and Nellie Griswold Francis, an African-American suffragist, led the effort to enact a state anti-lynching statute in 1921. We really recognize that the 19th Amendment expanded radically, you know, women's rights to vote, but that we knew, we know that women of color really could not access those rights until the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Also, Native American women weren't citizens until 1924. And while we've made progress, the work continues. We still have challenges for people being able to put those rights into practice. And that's really why groups like the League of Women Voters and others are still needed. When we think about women's rights and we think about blacks and we think about you know African Americans and where we've come from in terms of being able to vote, and all of the blood that's shed, all of the work that's been done, yeah, make sure that you go out there and vote. Why do I vote? Um, because, well, I'm expecting, so like, I care about my kid's future. She's a girl, so she has to be able to vote too, not just me. Now that you have it, make sure you exercise it. 100 years. If you want to learn more, the Minnesota Historical Society is premiering something called Votes for Women. It's an online exhibit that tells Minnesota women's stories. You'll be able to check it out on their website starting next Wednesday. You can learn more about what was just said in that piece.